Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. And today we got a doozy to talk about. Whew. All right, to be upfront, if this video gains any traction, I fully expect to get blasted from all sides. Among them, I expect Ukrainian nationalists, justifiably proud of their resistance to the Russian occupation of parts of their country, to take their shots. I expect fans of Ian McCollum and Forgotten Weapons to also not be very happy. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of this subject, let me lay out my personal feelings. I'm fully in support of Ukrainians defending their nation's territorial sovereignty against what I call Russian aggression. I'm also a huge fan of Forgotten Weapons. I've watched every video that Ian has produced on that channel, most of his work on InRange, and many videos he's done outside of his main project. I have no problem with what he does. In fact, I've financially supported his work. Now we can get into what this video is actually about. On February the 4th, Ian released a video on Forgotten Weapons announcing Headstamp Publishing's, a publisher he's a partner in, next book entitled The Foreigner Group, Our War in Ukraine 2014-2015, billed as the war memoir of Carlos Lofrus, and I apologize if I've butchered his name, a Swede who went to the Ukraine in 2014 to volunteer on behalf of that country to fight against the Russian invasion in February of that year. Lofrus ended up joining the Azov Battalion, a National Guard unit based in the Azov Sea coastal region. Now, if the Azov Battalion sounds familiar, it's because it's received an enormous amount of criticism. According to many people from all sides of the political spectrum, the Azov Battalion is considered an extreme right-wing organization with links to neo-Nazis. A spokesman for the battalion in 2014 admitted that anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of its members were in fact neo-Nazis. Even the unit's symbol is alleged to be a stylized wolf's angel, one of the original symbols used by the 2nd SS Panzer Division, Das Reich, though spokesmen for the unit say it's actually an abbreviation for a Ukrainian slogan that means national idea. Another badge commonly associated with the unit is an outright wolf's angel symbol as well as a black sun, both Nazi symbology. Now, in addition to those savory, unsavory links, the unit has been accused of rape, torture, and murder of civilians during the conflict, as well as widespread looting. As for the author of the book himself, there are some questions about Lofrus. Going by the name of Carlos Anderson on Twitter, there are allegations that he's made tweets that are far-right and anti-Semitic in nature. Critics arguing that his claim that he joined the Azov Battalion without sharing their alleged opinions to be questionable as a result. Now, I don't speak Swedish, so I can't confirm that either way, but enough people have pointed to posts that they argue are indications of politics closely aligned with that of the battalions. Now, I'm going to say at the outset that I don't know the truth about the Azov Battalion or Lofrus. There's enough smoke around the battalion that I'd be inclined to believe that anyone associating with it either shares their alleged politics or does not mind associating with people who do. I'll leave that to you to ponder on. As for Lofrus himself, I don't know the man or his mind, so I will withhold judgment on him personally. I know a rush to judgment usually results in a wrong or incomplete answer. For all I know, he joined the Azov Battalion without knowing its alleged politics and only wanted to fight for a cause he believed in. The problem, however, is with Ian McCollum and how he presented this topic in his video, specifically how he addressed Lofrus's membership in the Azov Battalion. Now, specifically, he joined a group called Azov, which has gotten quite a bit of press here in the West, most of it pretty unflattering. Uh, but most of that press was written with a political agenda in mind. And it's exactly that political agenda and politicization of the war in Ukraine that Karulo's book is trying to get away from. This is not a history of the war. It is not an indictment of one side or the other. It is simply a soldier's memoir of what it was actually like to be on the ground. Well, that's one way to put it. Describing the battalion's press as politically slanted while the video shows a vehicle driving through a gate with an alleged Nazi symbol on it was a rather unfortunately timed edit. 
If you watch the whole video, and it is linked in the description below, Ian states that he's talked to Lofus several times and has had the manuscript for a while, trying to figure out a way to publish it before settling on pre-orders to fund the project. Now, from the outset, I'm going to say that I don't believe Ian is a neo-Nazi. Frankly, I have no idea what his politics actually are, because he's done a remarkable job of keeping forgotten weapons largely apolitical. While he's occasionally addressed the political climate involving firearms, I couldn't tell you one way or another who he votes for or what causes he supports. In fact, some people have actually speculated that he's left of center. Either way beats me. That said, I'm rather surprised that Ian was as blasé about the Azov Battalion as he was, given that its reputation has been well known for years. I'm also surprised that he didn't do some due diligence on Lofrus, such as checking out his Twitter, to see if he harbored some rather awful political views. Views that, again, I cannot verify as I don't speak Swedish. Regardless, the disappointment over the announcement by Forgotten Weapons fans was immediate. Even In Range, which up until relatively recently Ian was a part of, issued a statement stating they had no connection to Headstamp. Now, while some are genuinely interested in reading the memoirs of someone who fought in that conflict, many others have rightly pointed out that there are some very serious questions about Azov and Lofrus. They also point out that publishing this memoir could besmirch the reputation of Headstamp Publishing and Ian himself. Now, there's an argument that memoirs like these have been printed since time immemorial. After all, every surviving general of the Wehrmacht, not to mention a dump truck full of, from the average soldier, wrote memoirs after the Second World War. And all took pains to portray themselves as an apolitical soldier who was just fighting for their country and just following legitimate military orders. And one can also certainly argue that having all sides tell their stories of a conflict is valuable if only to learn as many viewpoints and backgrounds as possible. People fight in wars for many different reasons, some noble, some not. The problem is Ian's glossing over of the Azov Battalion and its reputation. Of that seven minute video, the segment that you saw here was the only commentary that Ian had about it. More than half the video was just talking about the logistics of getting the book published. That's not a good look. I'm not saying that Headstamp shouldn't publish this book. I'm utterly opposed to cancel culture and the suppression of speech. I myself have faced that, and I know what it's like to have people try and deny your right to speak. If Lofrus does have dubious affiliations and beliefs, even if he's a neo-Nazi, I support his right to voice them. What I am saying, though, is that publishing a book that's being billed as apolitical when there are some pretty serious political questions surrounding the author, the unit, and the events they participated in, and I'm only talking about the battles, is misguided. You cannot remove the political element from a war memoir, whether published by a soldier or a general. Representing this book as a neutral look, something that any student of history can tell you is utterly impossible in the field is nonsensical. The very act of fighting with the unit is fighting for that unit and what it represents. The politics of the Azov Battalion can't be disregarded, and while Ian has taken pains to stay apolitical, his response to the concern is tone deaf, as you can see in this comment left below a critic's statement and potentially associating himself and headstamp with extremism is a very dangerous move for both reputations. What I'm going to say is this, you can no more separate Nazis from Nazism than you can separate the Azov Battalion from Neo-Nazism. He needs to address this glossing over that he did of the Azov Battalion in his video, and the book itself, which let's be honest, none of us have actually read while well, Ian has, better have a very thorough preface that explains and addresses the issues that it likely has. If he chooses to go ahead with its publishing, and I do support his right to do so, he needs to be very careful about how he does. As for me, I will not be ordering this book as interested as I may be about the conflict. At any rate, not the video that I had planned, but when I saw the video posted on Forgotten Weapons, I have to admit my heart sank, joining thousands of others similarly disappointed. At any rate, I hope you found this video to be measured, 
and may you have a good day. Take care and bye-bye.